Hi, in this video, I'm going to give a brief introduction to InfluxDB, how to set it up and how to use the uh, Golang client to basically write data into InfluxDB and actually uh, receive or get data from it. So there are many different types of databases so like relational, non-relational, key value stores or database like uh, Amazon S3 or Google Blob Storage where you simply need to dump a lots of big data. But when it comes to specifically time series data, which is basically the kind of data where we need to keep track of it as the time increases. For example, temperature or pressure or how much rain that happens in a day. So those kinds of time series data, uh, for them InfluxDB is one of the open source database to uh, store the time series data. So first I will uh, mention how to install it, how to run it locally, and then um, I will go through a simple Golang program to explain how to actually connect to the database and uh, write something and then to actually read it, read from it. So to install it's pretty simple. You use the brew install InfluxDB and it installs in your computer. And once you have installed, you can write the command InfluxD and simply run it. And that will start the InfluxDB server uh, on your computer. And then you can go to localhost 8086 um, to see the UI. And when you first enter it, it will ask you to set up the username and password. I have already set up, so I can simply sign in. And then you will be shown the UI of InfluxDB. So there are a few things to keep in mind. Um, so one is the concept of buckets so you store data in your buckets you can also create uh, organizations so in my case i can see my organization is this string basically and i can create my own buckets so i have created my buckets before but yeah you can always create by using this create bucket button that is one that is a, that is another thing and then the third thing is api tokens so you can generate an API token uh, by clicking on this button and that is that is kind of like a password. So you need to uh, have that in order to access the database. So these thing, three things you need to have before you can programmatically uh, interact with the database and uh, write data and uh, read from it. So now I'm going to show you uh, how to use the Go client to do these things. So this is the InfluxDB client written in Go. And I'm going to go through the typical example and run it locally. So here is the code which I'm going to run. I have defined those three things which I mentioned before, the token, my organization, a string, and my bucket name, which can be anything you want. So the first thing is to use the client to create a new uh, client object here by connecting to the uh, local influx TV server uh, using the base URL and the authentication token, which uh, I already showed you how to get. So once you do that, you get a client object and using the client object, you can um, start writing data. So there are multiple ways of writing data. Uh, I'll go through them one by one. So from this client, you can create uh, this write API by calling this write API blocking, uh, which basically takes the organization and bucket as input so that uh, the client knows where exactly to write. So once that is done, uh, there are three ways to actually add data to your uh, InfluxDB server. So I will go through this one first. So this is a bit better, nicer looking. So there are three things you can see. Uh, first is if you are going to add a point, uh, there are three things that a point can have. First is called a measurement or uh, you can call it like a table and it's called stat in this case. Then the next thing is tag. So in this case, in case of uh, temperature, you can add a tag, which is like a key value pair. So the key is unit and the value is temperature. So that from the tag, we know that we are writing temperature values. And then come fields. So you can add as many fields as you want. So in this case, I have one field called average which is uh, of certain value and then I have max for another value and then you can set the time which is time dot now okay so now you have defined a point then you can use the write API to actually write the point and that will ensure uh, the point is written into the InfluxDB database in the whatever measurement you specified and whatever 
organization and bucket that you specify. So this is one way of writing a point. The other way is basically you use this uh, new point function where you mention what is your uh, measurement name. Then you mention your tags and fields uh, in the form of maps. And then you simply give the time. And that's how you define the point. And you can also use the write point function to write that point. And the third way is to simply directly use something called line protocol which means you can basically use a line of a string and simply add that so in this case the measurement is start here and then the tag is uh, unit is temperature and followed by the fields and you simply hard code these numbers and then you simply use this write record function to write this line so any of these three things will work so this is the writing part, now comes the querying part. So for querying, you need to get this query API object by calling client.queryAPI followed by uh, the organization name. And then you actually need to write the query. So what I mean by that is that here you use this query API.query function in which you actually have to hard code the query for now. So unfortunately, they don't have a dedicated query builder for now. Uh, in Gola, so this for now you have to like write this uh, as a string. Uh, I have built a simple query builder which I can I can give a link to that later on in this video. But uh, for this example, you basically have to accept that it's a hard coded string. So the way you write it is okay. You define from your bucket name and then you define the time range, and then you can do you can add filter functions where all I'm saying here is that give me the values from all the measurements where the measurement value is called stat and those are from uh, last one hour. So if I'm running this code, all these code will get executed before this query, which means all these values will fall under the past one hour. So those should be shown. So once uh, you call that, you get a uh, result object in which you basically have to iterate through uh, the results to get into all to get all the results. So first there is a check for nil, and there is uh, this uh, iteration by calling uh, result dot next. And as long as uh, it is non nil, then you simply print the result, and then finally you close the client. Okay. So if I run this code now. And if it works fine, then it should ideally execute these print statements. So I'm running the main program. Okay, here you can see all the results where you have these rows where you have the fields um, set up, the measurement, and the start time and the end time, uh, start time and the stop time, and followed by uh, the values here. So first you are seeing all the average values here. So average is uh, 24, 23, 23, and then later on you see the max values here. Okay, so the max values are yeah, 45, 45, where basically everywhere I had set the max value to be. 45, which is why you are seeing the same value. So this is how you can basically set up and run InfluxDB locally, then write a Golan client to actually write data and query data. So in the UI, I can go to the buckets and I can go inside the one of the buckets. And here I can actually query it myself. So I'm going to the measurement, then the tag which I had, and then followed by the fields that I had, I keep on clicking and then submit, and it will show you the data points. Basically, you can also select uh, what aggregate function you want. So there is this mean, median, and last. So this is simply plotting the mean. Uh, if I select the last, it will show me the last values. Uh, you can always edit. Uh, you can always create this query by clicking on this and you can see this is the whole query so this is how i 
you can generate and modify your own queries. So here I have this yield as an aggregation function. So if I remove this uh, aggregation related uh, query and then I do submit, then I can see all the values here, all the data points. So this is a quick overview of uh, how Influx TV works and how to run it locally and how to use uh, the Go client to interact with it. Uh, if you have any thoughts or comments, feel free to share. Thanks.